Prospector News is media for educational purposes only and should not be construed as advice. We are not a certified financial analyst, licensed broker, or fund dealer. Exempt market dealer or hold a license to provide financial advice. We provide no legal opinion regarding accounting, tax, or law issues. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment advice or the solicitation to buy or sell stocks or commodities. All opinions expressed are those of the participants and should not be relied upon when making investment decisions. Those decisions should be made with the advice of a personal financial advisor. If you have enjoyed our podcast, please hit the like and share buttons and be sure to hit subscribe. This is Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector News. Joining me is uh, Prospector contributor and friend Kai Hoffman of Sort Financial Group. Hi, Kai. How are you doing? Hey, Mike. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem. For our listeners that uh, aren't familiar with Sort Financial and Oranink, can you uh, explain to them uh, what the Oranink Group is? Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, yeah, Orin Inc. I bought the company back in September 2016 off of uh, Benjamin Cox, actually. And uh, we, we track all the financings in the junior mining sector, meaning we don't track companies over $1.5 billion in size and no financings over $100 million. And we uh, only track straight up equity uh, financings on the TSX, TSX Venture and CSE. And we put out an index every Monday that you kindly uh, redistribute for us, Mike. And uh, we, we sort of tell you on a weekly basis how the industry and how the sector is doing uh, with our index score. Nobody else does that. It makes us quite unique. And our data is uh, you know, fr- uh, available for free at uh, orinink.com. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, we're happy to put that out every Monday. That, uh, that gives everybody a good sense as to uh, who's getting financed and uh, really how the, the financing marketplace actually is looking. So in your opinion, how is the financing marketplace looking right now? It is surprisingly good, um, or not just surprisingly well. We're trading at nineteen hundred over nineteen hundred dollar gold, but uh, sentiment is still mixed. Um, we've had a couple of good weeks, just or actually this week started off great, but uh, now it's fair, it's fairly mixed, and it has been uh, ever since say uh, August last year. We felt like we we're in a downward spiral because uh, gold has been range bound, not a lot of excitement. Uh, but stocks haven't moved either. But we've seen a lot of financings. So no money is flowing straight into the market, but a lot of money is flowing into the companies. So last year, just 20, uh, 2021, uh, has been the best year in a decade of junior mining finance that we were tracking. We raised over 6.8 billion US dollars for the sector. And uh, that is the highest number since, as I said, 2011, where we raised over $8 billion. So that's fantastic. That means companies can drill value is hopefully being generated but uh, so far we haven't seen the the discoveries that we're all hoping and praying for right yeah no it's uh there's little hits here and there but not uh you know nothing major uh since say great bear and you know they had a string before they got taken out by ken ross but uh that was the last major discovery that we've had uh for a while so yeah, no, uh, true. And uh, Philo Mining comes to mind as well. That's a company that just reached $3 billion in market cap. Uh, Copper Porphyry down in uh, Argentina, that's uh, attracting a lot of attention. Copper Gold, the theme there, obviously. But uh, no, in general, it's like a lot of infill programs. So uh, we've seen a lot of studies come out. They've all been punished because of inflation, which is absolutely uh, against us in the market right now, despite gold trading at 1950. Every company that's putting out a PEA or feasibility study or pre-feasibility study is getting punished right now because nobody believes the numbers. And uh, we, we see it in other, uh, on, on other ends as well, like production cost overruns, uh, companies not being able to deliver, uh, companies not even developing projects anymore because of in- inflation. I've just seen that in the news this morning that a company halted uh, operations or even development of a project just uh, because of cost overruns and inflation pressures. Yeah, inflation is hitting us all in the pocketbooks. Our uh, gas prices, which are controlled here on uh, Prince Edward Island, where I'm located, um, just took another jump upwards uh, unexpectedly on uh, Wednesday. So, uh, you know, good thing I have a hybrid. That's all I can say. <laughs> no, it's it's true. Like, we're all being hit hard in that regard. And, uh, you know, Mike, have you considered riding a bike? 
Uh, yeah, and uh, fortunately, having moved from the West Coast where there's nothing but mountains, it's really flat here. So riding a bike is actually feasible. Uh, it's, you know, bike and, bike and lentils, I think I've been told recently, is, uh, is the way to go to save money. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, so you keep talking about the, the gold price. So is the financing that you're seeing all gold dependent? Uh, no surprisingly like of course there's a positive sentiment because we have traded over seventeen hundred dollars over the last six eight months um but it's not that you see a flurry of uh, financings happening all of a sudden when gold jumps over 1900 we actually reached uh, two thousand dollars just recently last week but uh it hasn't really popped up in the financing so overall like sentiment has been positive in on the financing side not on the market side so it's quite for lack of a better term, it's still very dead out there, especially today, like the day we're talking, like my, my watch list, my portfolios are pretty much blood red. It's brutal, uh, despite gold still trading at $1,950 an ounce. Um, but fortunately, financings are happening. We've seen bought deal financings up to $30 million in explorers. Uh, that That is positive. But uh, I want to see some more market buying. How else are we going to make money and generate more value? Yeah, the markets, Mr. Market does have to... Uh has to buy into the sector. Um, every once in a while, we see a little bit of a, you know, toe dipping into the water, but uh, not enough really to be moving a lot of these stocks a whole lot. Absolutely. Like, as, as we just said, like, it'd, love, it'd be great to get some more discoveries going. But uh, as we all know, it's not easy to make a discovery and not every drill hole, you know, is, is going to delineate a new gold deposit or that's interesting for a major, right? Uh, so there's a process involved. But uh, some of that money that, that is going into those financing, even a little bit is being diverted into the market uh, directly, I think that would really be helpful and would help us uh, move forward. Because we've seen Barrick and Newmont move to all-time highs, especially Newmont just reached an all-time high. And that's almost like it, it is a bit frustrating to see when you're only looking at junior miners, right? Yeah, well, the majors generally move before the juniors. So the fact that they're hitting all-time highs um, is positive for our sector moving forward. Eventually, they will make a uh, uh, start to make a catch-up move, especially when the majors are going to be starting to look to uh, to replace uh, some of that ore in the ground that's uh, been mined out for the last several years without any uh, any new acquisitions. That that's the thing as well. And one thesis I'm still looking into is uh, reserve pricing for the majors as well. What what do they price their reserves in? Barrick stayed with twelve hundred dollars in their last report that came out in January. So even if they were to update that to nineteen hundred dollars or even nineteen fifty, uh, that would change dramatically, and all of a sudden they'd have a ton of reserves, right? So that's something we need to consider as well. Like they're not really in a bind uh, applying modern numbers or uh, uh, today's prices. Than, uh, than we would think, and uh, there's no pressure to do anything at this point. Um, but as we all know, Barrick's production and Newmont's production is declining. They do need to refill um, their pipeline at some point, but I don't see the pressure that the market sees right now because they could just reprice and all of a sudden come up with a major reserve base. I see. Now, both in Canada and the United States, there's been rumblings about uh, critical metals that are uh, needed for the new green economy and uh you know to fight you know and combat global warming are we seeing increasing funds starting to flow into those more battery metal kind of companies now and away from the precious metals or is that something that's not occurring no it, it, it is occurring mike and uh, it, it is happening and we just prepared a report for the uh, for gold we trust uh that we're being featured in uh it's the big report ronnie stirfel and the incrementum group is putting out every year and uh, we, we looked at that as well. And copper obviously stands out because for me, it, it's not a critical metal, but it's a metal that goes into the battery production or is really essential in the EV cycle. And uh, that, those have picked up tremendously, copper gold financings. But uh, we're also last year, we've seen quite a few financings into lithium companies. Um, that has been, uh, I wouldn't say a surprise, but it's like uh, an increase than over previous years as well. A couple of graphite companies uh, made the list and also that broke into the top, uh, I think it was the top 20 financings last year. Uh, so that, that was interesting to see that there is enough investor appetite to push those companies forward. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, if we're going to get to that green economy and have everyone driving electric cars, we're going to be needing to mine a lot more of those uh, those items to support the infrastructure around that. Absolutely. And uh, like one thing was actually quite interesting, uh, like Tesla just moved away from the cobalt battery. Um, 
I'm not a technical expert on that regard, but it was uh, it, it was a discussion because about uh, like where the cobalt gets sourced from, and that's an interesting development. And uh, so I'm keeping a closer look on cobalt companies because it seems to me like they're becoming irrelevant. And uh, I don't own any, I don't follow any too closely, but that's something investors should keep in mind as well. If, if once a, like Tesla starts moving, they're usually a trendsetter. Other companies will likely follow moving away from those cobalt-based batteries. Yeah, I uh, read the cobalt and nickel are pretty much uh, interchangeable in those batteries. So uh, if the nickel price stays as high as it is now, though, economics may come back into into play and uh, and push the cobalt back. But Canada being a major supplier of cobalt, you would think that uh, we would be very well positioned to uh, uh, be uh, more an ethically source uh, sorry, an ethical source of the cobalt rather than the Congo where they're getting it now. Yeah, you, you'd think that, right? But it's it's not that way. Like, it still comes out of the Congo. It needs to be refined somewhere. And uh, it, there's not that much in Canada that would satisfy the needs. I see. Um, the other big uh, gorilla in the room has been COVID for the last several years. Um, anecdotally, I've kind of thought that I've seen a shifting in the seasonality of the financing um, ecostructure away from that big November to March period to, say, March onwards to like May, June, and a lot of drilling kind of happening later in the season than, uh, than has been in the past. Is, does the data support that or am I out to lunch? No, you're not out to lunch, but I think we're we're shifting back to the new norm uh, to normal. <clears throat> Apologies, um, but uh, because of COVID, nobody took vacations, right? So for the last two years, like people spent pretty much 24 months at their desks, uh, working with very few exceptions, and uh, we we are seeing it back now. Uh, last summer was brutal. Um, we're we've seen it now over the uh, the Christmas break as well. It's extremely quiet. People are just happy to travel. Uh, I've been looking at hotels and travel, trying to travel a little bit, and it's all booked out. So people are, uh, go I think we are going back to the the same, let's say, routine uh, when it comes to financings. But because of COVID, we've seen financings explode last or in the summer of 2020 when gold made a huge rally that uh, really uh, propelled us forward. But even last year, uh, throughout the year, the financings were happening left, right, and center. So um, that sort of skewed the picture a little bit. But I think we will be back to a reg more regular seasonality uh, when it comes to financings uh, very shortly. Yeah, that'll be good to uh, to see. And uh, I'm looking forward to normal, especially uh, the live investor events where we get to talk to people and have uh, appropriate two-way conversations. Uh, this uh, staring at a screen and uh, just hearing somebody talk at you is uh, has uh, been a little bit dull for the last two and a half years. It has been. So I've been to a couple of conferences and just people are ecstatic being out again and just conversations are free flowing, lots of good information being exchanged. Uh, that just doesn't work virtually. Yeah, I'm right? looking so. forward to uh, to May. I've got a, an event down in Chicago uh, the first weekend in May that's uh, being put on by Chris Temple and the Raddus family. And then we have a uh, uh, little out of season, but the uh, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is, is scheduled a week the week following that on the uh, uh, 18th and 19th. And I'm looking forward to uh, to being back in Vancouver and talking to uh, to everybody there and seeing you in person. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a while. We definitely will go out for breakfast again, Mike. And uh, I'm a keynote speaker at the Vancouver Resource Conference as well. So um, if your listeners haven't registered yet, uh, use ho code Hoffman with one N uh, to get a 50% discount. Got it. Wonderful. That. That's uh, <laughs> that's good advice. Uh, if you're in the Vancouver area, that is a uh, a must do event uh, every year. Normally, it's held in January, but uh, uh, because of the COVID outbreak at that time, they shifted to uh, to this May date for this year. Now, speaking of conferences, I believe you're hosting one coming up in Frankfurt, Germany, later on in May. Yeah, we are, and uh, really looking forward to it. This is our second physical event in Frankfurt. Uh, we're hosting it at the JW Marriott Hotel just in downtown Frankfurt. Uh, we got 30 companies coming out from North America. We got six fantastic keynote speakers joining us. Uh, conference language is English, so don't be afraid. But uh, feel free to come out. Uh, format is presentations plus one on one meetings with the decision makers. Just uh, the, the idea of the conference was really to put something on that I would be interested in, that I would get the most value out of. And those one on one meetings paired with some really insightful uh, keynotes 
is probably the best format that I could come up with that I would be most interested in. And it's free to attend for investors. Um, DeutscheGoldmesse.com. And uh, yeah, join us in Frankfurt, please. That sounds uh, that sounds good. Now, if you can't make it to Frankfurt, is there an online component for people to participate in? Uh, no. So we, we will record, obviously, all the presentations, but it's really intended as a physical conference for for exchanging ideas and just meeting up in person. But we will record all the presentations and put them on our YouTube channel afterwards. So Good. So if you don't make it to Germany, uh, people can go to YouTube, to your... Uh, to your channel and uh, and see the presentations. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the Deutsche Goldmesser YouTube channel, so please feel free to do that. Uh, but I encourage, obviously, everyone to come out to Frankfurt because I think that's where the value uh, is, is really stored, is, is in those meetings and meeting people face-to-face. -face. We put a bit, big emphasis on the networking aspect as well. Uh, we have a big meeting area where lunch and uh, uh, snacks are being served as well so people can interact with the, with the decision makers. Wonderful. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you for uh, for a breakfast in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm already nice looking to, forward to it. I can smell the bacon, Mike. Everything gets back to normal. I can already smell the bacon, so I'm looking forward to seeing you, Mike. Wonderful. Thanks very much, Kai. <laughs> Take care.